So hi, so hi, so hi, hello, what's good, what's good on the internet, what's good in life, LI495, happy St. Patty's Day to all yous, wear green if you can perhaps, so you don't get pinched, you don't get teased in the hood or wherever you at, I don't know if this qualifies as green, this is more, this is more I guess some, some more almost like, almost like a teal, almost like the old Florida Marlins colors before they changed them to, to make them more um, South Beach-esque. But anyway, uh, welcome to my week, to my weekend recap show, 10 minutes on the clock for today, St. Patty's Day, March 17th of 2012. Let's get right to it. So the first thing that was on my mind was something that went down that popped off a little bit earlier this week. It was on Monday, I believe, when it was announced that Syracuse's Fab Mello was declared ineligible for this year's NCAA's basketball tournament and I'm wondering what in the hell was he doing on the team anyway if he was going to be declared ineligible for the tourney now there was some stuff about there that going on going down that perhaps he was going to be ineligible for classes that he wasn't even going to class maybe his grades weren't up, up to par to where most NCAA tournament players are and it started getting me thinking it started getting me thinking as to when the tournament finally started. You know, they started releasing a lot of these commercials and talking about, oh, you still think we're just a bunch of dumb jocks. And they've had these commercials going on uh, during the NCAA's tournament coverage, and even not just that, but, but even during NCAA um, sporting events on TV for a while now, whether they be on CBS, whether they be on TNT, whether they be on TBS True TV, or even the CBS Sports Network. And the thing about it is that they are right for the most part. Most most athletes do go to class because they are required to go to class because in order for them to stay on the team they have to maintain a rather high GPA they have standards that they have to, that the NCAA puts them up to but the problem is is that in major college football as well as major college basketball a lot of these athletes do not go to class because they feel you know what I don't have to go to class you know what they feel that you know all that all that math stuff all that reading stuff all that college stuff that you actually learn in a classroom just in case that I don't necessarily make it in the pros ah please I don't have to worry about that because I'm going to make it in the pros I'm going to get endorsements I'm going to get money I'm going to be blang 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 it up so you know what I don't necessarily have to go to class and the thing about it is that they are dead wrong they have a lot to look forward to when it comes to the money that can be made in the NFL in the NBA, but you know what? That money's not always going to be there, and you always need something else to fall back on. So Fat Mello, he's done for the tournament, and you know the fact that he was on the team absolutely surprises me. And as far as his draft status, if he ever thinks about wanting to go into the NC, into the uh, into the NBA draft, that really hurt his draft status, I believe, because it's a character issue. And teams more days are putting more focus not just on the fact that that these players are pretty damn good players, but also they want to know if you're if you're a character guy, if you're not going to cause distractions in the locker room with your team. So Fat Mello, he's done for the NCAA tournament. And as far as the beginning of the NCAA tournament, the first day, that first Thursday, I was sort of looking for the upset. You know, I always look forward to upsets. Everybody looks forward to upsets because, you know, I pick a lot of upsets on my bracket. Everybody loves to pick upsets, or, or at least unless you're Jay Billis or President Barack Obama, who always seem to go chalk every day on you, especially you, Jay Billis. But anyway, a lot of um, upsets that we were looking forward to on Thursday were were some for, for some reason to avoid almost from the tournament and I was sort of going huh come again where were the upsets it's almost like it's almost like one, some of these politicians when you, when they ask they love to talk about where are the jobs well we were asking where are the upsets on Thursday we almost had one with UNC a 16 almost defeating a 1 in Syracuse of course without Fat Mello and I believe that they got exposed against UNC Asheville and they're going to have a tough time going forward against Kansas State and against whoever else that they want to play in the NCAA tournament but the fact that they got into a barn burner with a 16 seed that tells you right now they are not making the final four they are not going to New Orleans so they might as well put up their trumpets and might as well not even think about singing any jazz or blues because they're not playing in this in the Louisiana Superdome this year in, um, in New Orleans in my estimation so there was that there was also the fact that on Friday we finally did start seeing some daggone upsets start to pop off like crazy, especially in the cases of 15 seeds going ahead and chopping down the Goliath two seeds. There was Norfolk State and HBCU 
beating Missouri. There was Lehigh, there was Lehigh going ahead and beating Duke. I imagine Tim was very happy about that considering that they have Pennsylvania school. There was Ohio, not Ohio State, but Ohio. The University of Ohio beating Michigan, and even though it wasn't Ohio State, every Ohio State fan in the Buckeye State was like, ha, 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 Michigan, you got beat by freaking Ohio. Just wait till college football season when you kick your you kick your ass again with Urban Meyer as our new coach. So that was that was going on in the NCAA tournament as well. Finally, the upsets started raining and raining down, and hopefully we will see more of them going forward this tournament. Moving on to other news. What about Andy Pettit signing with the Yankees? It's reportedly going to be a one-year, $2.5 million deal if he can make the team. I don't know what he has to prove. I mean, is there something going on in his family? Apparently, his family was very supportive of this, so he's not broke. It must have been that he, he retired um, last year, and then what happened was that he tried started to take a year off, and now, apparently, he's got that itch to pitch again. He's still 40 years old. He can still pitch. I mean, if he, if he can manage a Jamie Moyer-like comeback, he may be able to pitch for the next nine years, even though I doubt Andy Pettit is trying to pitch for the next nine years like Jamie Moyer into his, into his 50s. But he's trying to make the rotation. He's in spring training right now. They signed him to a minor league contract. He's got a shot to make the big club with the Yankees, New York's rotation, they're trying to set up that rotation, they already got two of their five spots set, we already know who's going to go into those two spots, Hiroki Kuroda and CeCe Tabathia, and not in that order either, but Andy Pettit going ahead trying to make the New York Yankees roster, he's a veteran, New Yorkers love him, Yankee fans love him, he was on, the, on all those championship teams, he's got like four or five championship rings on his fingers, so Andy Pettit coming back once again to the Bronx Bombers, trying once again for another shot and another championship. Moving on, moving on, moving on. Also, keeping it moving, Derek Fisher. He got traded to the Houston Rockets for Jordan Hill. Now, I can see why the Los Angeles Lakers wanted to make this trade. Because they know that right now, the way that their team is set up, they are not beating Oklahoma City. They had to get younger, so they went ahead, traded him, even though he's a longtime Laker, of course. It's almost like one of the uh, one of the elder stewards, if you will, of the Lakers, and also the head of the um, one of the main guys on the NBA's Players Association. But what they had to go ahead and trade him, mainly because they're worried about Oklahoma City. Because right now, with the way it stands right now, they are not beating the Thunder. They are going to get struck by Thunder and Lightning, if you know what I mean, in the playoffs if they go up against Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, and them boys from Oklahoma City. So that's why they went ahead, the Lakers went ahead and made that trade. And I would like to close this also on a note, on a note talking about NFL free agency. We don't know yet where Peyton Manning is going to be, even though there was a report out there saying that he's going to make uh, a decision probably by either this Monday or this Tuesday. So something is going to happen sooner than that. It looks like it's down to the Denver Broncos and the Tennessee Titans. I was sort of disappointed when I heard that the Arizona Cardinals were out of the running because um, because I believe that's the best fit. But obviously. Him wanting to stay in the AFC was motivated by family because the family said, Peyton Manning, don't you dare sign with an NFC team because don't you dare ruin a chance of having an Eli Manning versus Peyton Manning Super Bowl. We want to see you guys one day in a Super Bowl, and we still think that you still have a shot to make that happen because the New York Giants are the defending champs, so don't you dare sign with an AFC team. That's probably what Archie Manning and the rest of the Manning family down in New Orleans probably told Peyton, and he listened. So it looks like it's down to the Denver Broncos and the Tennessee Titans. I can only... I can only imagine what Skip Bayless will do if Peyton Manning signs with his beloved Denver Broncos and pushes Tim Tebow into a into a, a backup role. Maybe even thinking about trading Tebow if they went ahead and got signed Peyton Manning. If they went ahead and signed the man, and if they and if he signs with the Tennessee Titans, of course it would be a nostalgic feeling for him because he played his college football in, at the University of Tennessee at Rocky Top. So that's an interesting. Those are interesting developments. And uh, once again put Skip Bayless on uh, on lookout watch if he signs with the Denver Broncos. He's probably going to try and put uh, try and flatten Peyton Manning's tires the day he signs that contract if he decides to sign with the Denver Broncos. And also I wanted to say another on also on another note, Mario Williams of uh, the the the, the uh, linebacker for the Houston Texans, he signed a huge deal with the Buffalo Bills. That's not often that they're able to sign deals with the Bills, but um but or rather that teams 
are like the Buffalo Bills are able to sign big time you know Pro Bowl players because Buffalo isn't exactly the most flashiest of cities but congratulations to the Buffalo Bills for signing Mario Williams congratulations on him landing that deal and maybe that has something to do with Peyton Manning perhaps you know not really wanting to sign with the Miami Dolphins because Mario Williams is in that division and also I never believe he wanted to sign with the Dolphins anyway because of because uh, of uh, Tom Brady or Mark Sanchez because he wants to win a division not settle for a wild card which is always a possibility when you're playing in Peyton Manning's division so also Mario Williams signing with the Buffalo Bills huge signing right there for a team that doesn't always make these ty these types of big time splash deals in free agency and one that could be uh, one day before this was rumored to be going to Toronto or maybe even LA. So that would be our weekend. Uh, that would be our weekend recap show for this week. Ten minutes on the clock with your boy Akeem Balam, LI495. A lot of stuff happened this weekend. Hopefully it'll be the same this week as well. You've probably even seen some of my earlier videos talking about NFL free agency, where Peyton Manning's gonna go, and also Dwight Howard stuff in the news, and also Mike D'Antoni being released, or rather he resigned rather from the New York Knicks. So that's it. That's our weekend recap show. What you think? What you think of all this stuff? NCAA tournament, Fab Mello, Mario Williams, Andy Pettit, and everything else. That's my phone going all off the hook, so I better end this right now. What you think? One guy talking about nothing. LI495. See you on the internet somewhere. I, I'll call this a uh, a musical rendition to the end of this here video. Hmm. <laughs>